Um, good afternoon and also good morning for the ones who are watching us from Latin America. Uh, welcome to this BATD side event, Empowering Women, Empowering Energy, Gender Equality in the Evolution of Green Hydrogen in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, this has been organized by the project Renewable Hydrogen Development in Chile, um, a Team Europe project um, of the EU Commission and the VMBK um, that is implemented by the Gateset. I am Belen Pilares, <laughs> and um, I'm a regional gender advisor for renewable energies and energy efficient program, as well as for JZ Conosur, um, Peru, Chile, and Argentina. And I will be moderating this event. Um, some really light housekeeping. Uh, we will be live streaming and recording this event. Um, uh, it is also important for the ones who are watching us online, uh, it is possible to access um, live uh, translation from Spanish. Well, we have a very packed agenda and a wonder, wonderful speakers here with us. So let's start with the welcoming words um, of Esteban Benzel, Parliamentary State Secretary for the VMDK. Afterwards, Sabine Almitschanjan, European Commission uh, Political Advisor. And lastly, Ingrid Hoven. Um, our Vice Chair um, of the Management Board of the Gate Set. Please have an answer. Yeah, bienvenido in Berlin. Es un gran placer darles la bienvenido aquí en el Ministro. Es... Your Excellency, former President of Chile, dear Michel Bachelet, dear Minister, for Energy and Mining of Uruguay, Elisa Fascio, dear member of the German Parliament, Katrin Ullich, dear ambassadors, representatives from business, science and politics from Latin America, dear ladies and gentlemen online here and at the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action. I'm very pleased to welcome you to this event, Empowering Energy, Gender Equality in the Evolution of Green Hydrogen in Latin America and the Caribbean, organized by the project Renewable Hydrogen Development Chile. A Team Euro project of the EU Commission and this ministry had this that is implemented by the GEZ. This side event is part of the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue 2024 and has been supported by the Chilean Ministry of Energy the Latin American Energy Organization, OLADE, and the initiative Women Energize Women of this ministry. As the supporter and male ally of Women Energize Women, I'm proud to welcome you to today to this special event. My name is Stefan Wenzel and I'm Parliamentary State Secretary here in this ministry. We are at a pivotal moment in human history. The choices we made today will determine the trajectory of our planet's future. The urgency of climate change cannot be ignored. Germany, Germany has set ambitious targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 55% before 2030 and become carbon neutral by 2045. But we cannot achieve this without accelerating the development of all renewable energy sources. The ramp up of the new green hydrogen economy plays a vital role in the energy transition. Not only does it require unlocking the potential of renewable energy technologies, but also that of 50% of our global population underrepresented so far, women, joining forces to work to get towards a gender equality, equi a gender equitable energy transition is our obligation and an urgent necessity. Under the 1.5 scenario, we need the number of people working in the energy sector to rise to 140 million by 2030 globally, creating an additional 85 million energy transition related jobs. We cannot achieve this without the enormous potential of female visionaries and technicians by involving more women in renewable energy and especially in the hydrogen sector, we tap into a vast pool of talent. Currently, new female networks are being established in the green hydrogen sector, like for example, 
the red de mujeres en hidrogeno verde in Chile, or the well-established initiative Women in Green Hydrogen that started in Germany. Moreover, more young women are becoming interested in technical careers. With the help of female forces, we will be able to accelerate the transformation of industries and the development of green hydrogen and its rates to the speed that is required. We need to tap the potential of talented and skilled women also applies to the emerging markets region in Latin America. Recruiting women ensures access to more talent, an additional reason to aim for gender equality in the renewable energy sector. Furthermore, more women in renewable energy will make teams more diverse, an additional advantage as diversity is the cornerstone of innovation. Studies have shown that diverse teams bring a wider range of perspectives to the table and foster creativity as well as critical thinking skills. This is why my ministry launched Women Energize Women two years ago, a global communication campaign organizing, among others, conferences and events. It has been implemented on our behalf by GIZ and the German Renewable Energy Federation within our global climate and energy partnerships. Women Energize Women serves as a platform for all climate and energy partnerships and our implementing partners, German Energy Agency, Jajai Iset, Adelphi Guidehouse, working with the German Association of Renewable Energy and other partners such as the Global Women's Network for the Energy Transition. Women Energize Women is a campaign that comprises supporting other networks, mentoring programs, capacity building, online meetings, but also conferences and side events, panel discussions with female-only speakers, social media communications, workshops, and creative formats. This side event of the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue is an example. Another is an event at the Smarter EU Europe. Furthermore, the first Latin America conference on capacities for change and gender empowerment in energy was held in Santiago de Chile in May 23 and was continued at the COP28 in Dubai. The meetings received high-level recognition. The conference in Chile in May last year, for example, was held with former president of Chile, Michel Bachelet, who is also present today. Thank you very much to be here. And representatives from other, from over 100 political institutions and experts from Latin America and Europe. As you see, the initiative brings together participants from around the world who are actively engaged in the energy industry. It integrates female perspectives into the energy transition debate, addresses structural gender equality, inequalities, and makes women contributions visible. The initiative actively co collaborates with a large number of women networks and organizations, transfer knowledge, and connects female experts to attract, retain, and enhance female talents in the renewable sector. So, I'm happy to have this event today, and I'd like to thank you all for the commitment to achieve our common goal. And thank you very much for joining us here together in Berlin. Thank you so much for the very clear and strong message. Um, I would like to give the floor to Sabine Almirchanjan from the EU Commission. Okay. Uh, Your Excellency Michel Bachelet, um, dear Minister Fascio, hi, <laughs> um, dear Member of Parliament Katrin Ulig, um, dear Mr. Wenzel, uh, dear Ms. Hogan, um, dear Ms. Alvarenga, um, dear Ms. Gaska, um, dear Ambassadors, dear all. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very happy to be here and taking over for my colleagues from Santiago de Chile uh, who couldn't come here today. Um, so um, equality and inclusion in all its dimensions, including gender, sex, race, religion, disability, age, sexual orientation, are core principles of the European Union and a fundamental right. They are also drivers for economic growth and social well-being. 
In business, politics, society, diversity is fundamental in creating equality. Also, it unlocks innovation and drives market growth. Current research suggests that diverse teams increase profitability and make better decisions, and a higher percentage of women on company boards bring higher returns on equity and investment. However, <clears throat> while there's a growing recognition of the importance and benefits of diversity and inclusion for industry development, in the case of the energy sector, there remains a lot to be done. As the European Union pursues its European Green Deal ambition to become climate neutral by 2050, it is important that the energy industry actively promotes diversity and equal opportunities at all levels from energy professionals and decision makers to consumers. In particular, when talking about the challenges related to green hydrogen production, the lack of women working in the industry emerges as a crucial one. Currently, a mere 22% of women are represented in the oil and gas sector, according to joint research from the World Petroleum Council and the Boston Consulting Group. Also, it is estimated that around 20% of panel speakers at green hydrogen summits are women, according to the Women in Green Hydrogen uh, Research. We know that the emerging renewable hydrogen industry faces multiple technical, financial, logistical, social and environmental challenges, which must be addressed creatively and collaboratively. A more varied workforce with a diverse skill set and knowledge will add immense value to business operations, leveraging different ex expertise and points of view to create new solutions. Consequently, the ongoing transformation of the energy sector calls for a change in the business model, including updating the human resources model to attract more women. Without effecting the urgent change required, we face a perpetual cycle of women struggling to enter a male-dominated industry. Additionally, significant gender gaps remain not only at the energy production side, but also at the energy consumption end. A recent comprehensive study carried out by the European Commission's Joint Research Center sheds light on the often overlooked impact of gender disparities in access to clean, affordable energy, highlighting the need for immediate action to bridge the gap and foster social resilience. The study shows that the, the, the repercussions of gender poverty are physiological and health-related as well as economic and social. The European Union is working on various fronts to address all these challenges, which are also present in the different initiatives that we support within the framework of our global gateway instrument agenda throughout the globe. In particular, in the context of the Team Europe Initiative for the Development of Renewable Hydrogen, promoted by the delegation of the European Union in Chile, we are supporting the Team Europe RH2 project, co-financed by the European Union and the German Ministry, and implemented by GIZ and AECID. This project seeks to address several of the problems mentioned here, so that the promotion of this industry considers inclusion and gender balance throughout the hydrogen value chain. We believe it is a unique opportunity to work in the formation of this new industry with an inclusive gender perspective. There's also a relevant opportunity to contribute to a just energy transition that also addresses the energy poverty gender gap, both Chile and the European Union. Finally, with many thanks to the GIZ team for organizing this space within the framework of our RH2 project, uh, I welcome you and thank you for participating in this important event, which we hope will shed light on how to address the challenges that call upon us today. I wish you all a successful day. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. Um, I would like to give the floor now to Ingrid Hoven. The Parliamentary State Secretary Stefan Wenzel, the Excellencies, Ministers, Ambassadors, Members of Parliament, dear Michel. It's, it's really a pleasure um, and I'm honored to also extend a warm welcome to all of you, especially to those that have traveled so far from Latin America to join us today for this very important um, event. 
Actually, this is a gathering about coming together key decision makers from Latin America, from Europe, from Germany, to actually to make our partnership even closer, bigger and more successful. And it's really about driving the green hydrogen agenda forward. We all know that when we gather together on gender issues in this sector, it's, it's still something very new. Um, looking back, and you all know these, these discussion, the energy sector was considered as being gender neutral infrastructure. Who should look into what kind of impact an energy program and investment should have on specific uh, segments of the population? I think nowadays we, we know much better. It does matter a lot where the infrastructure is being built, with whom it is being built, and who is going to benefit from it. And actually, men and women have different access to, to finance, to markets, to opportunities. And um, as Stefan Wilson said, we have to make sure that when we, as we develop the green hydrogen market, that men and women can benefit equally from the new opportunities that can bring a lot of good to communities and to people. Um, I think as we are joining forces and we work together in the Team Europe Development Renewable Hydrogen in Chile project, we have actually made some experiences. And I would like to share three very briefly a preliminary observation. First, I think we have learned that it's important to have a good analysis at hand. And the type of sustainable impact assessment has collected gender disaggregated data that has actually provided the evidence that we need in order to make the right decisions. Secondly, it was so key to involve the private sector. We can't develop the green hydrogen market without the private sector. But within the project, we have picked those ones that actually give more emphasis and focus to gender, gender issues. And this has actually overall increased the gender equality aspects within the project implementation. And thirdly, and this also has been mentioned so very briefly, it's really also about strengthening networks, making sure that women's voices are being heard in the sector and beyond it. I think we have made progress, but there is still, some, still room for improvement. And why? But finally, it's not only about making an impact assessment, but we have to ask ourselves whether in order to give really women the same say and voice within the sector, whether we partially have to change the rules of the game and make sure that we really achieve parity at the table, in decision making, in, at all levels in, in institutions to make sure that really this becomes the new normal, the new business as we would like to see it. Apparently there is still some work to do. So let's continue to join forces and to make it a reality. And I wish us all a wonderful evening and a very frank discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Verhoeven. And thank you again all uh, for your welcoming words, uh, representing the institutions who have make, actually made this event possible. Uh, and now we can give a very warm welcome to our keynote speaker, uh, Michelle Bachelet, former president of Chile and chairwoman of the Chilean Strategic Committee um, on Hydrogen. Well, dear Herr Benzel, dear Frau Amis Janchan, dear Frau Hofer, dear panelists, including Madam Parliamentarian, uh, Excellencies, friends. Um, first of all, I would like all of you uh, to thank you, really, because of this invitation to, to gather us, to be able to discuss in an area that is really important and where, because green hydrogen is a new industry that's starting, we can do things in a different way. We can change things that are not the best and we there is a great opportunity. So that's why I think that generating space for discussion regarding the participation of women in the energy sector, particularly around renewables, is very relevant to advance gender equality in an industry that has not been characterized by this. Uh, Madam Hoffman, you were very optimistic. We say we still have 
some things to do. I would say we still have a lot to do, <laughs> but I think you gave us hope and incentive. Well, energy is an essential component of our daily lives as a driver of human development. It has the power to worsen or improve people's quality of life, but also can influence the necessary education, now social and economic changes to achieve equality between men and women. Within the framework or of a just energy transition, new in industries and development poles are becoming globally relevant. The progress of the clean energy generation industry, electromobility, and the emergence of green hydrogen represents an opportunity to advance gender equality and inclusion of women in a sector that has been historically been led by men. And I think this is the only way to ensure sustainable development that leaves no one behind. But on the other hand, as you all mentioned, particularly you, Mr. Benzel, and you, Madam Sabine, uh, we, are, we already know the importance of the diversity in a working place in terms of the what it offers, what brings new ideas, new innovation. So uh, women also can be a very important part of that in, on a more diverse, flexible, and with different capacities that can look at the, at the industry in different levels with, a new, with, with, with new perspectives. The energy industry is progressing and so has women's inclusion and rights. While in recent decades we have seen important advances in this regard, I'm talking in general, not only in, in, in energy sectors, from more education for girls to more women in leadership positions. In recent years, women's rights have once again come under attack from different fronts. So women must always be vigilant and we must continue to fight both to maintain the spaces we have already won and to continue advancing in those where equality is lacking. It's so much wider than energy. I'm concerned about the backlash on, on women's rights that we can see around the world. And the energy sector has shown greater commitment and action on gender issues in recent years. It is increasingly common to find panels specially dedicated to the discussion of these challenges. And I want to highlight what you already heard friends highlighted, the so-called SEHEN, uh, Capacities for Change, Empowerment, Gender, and um, the Energy uh, Conference, which began in 2023 in Santiago. Um, and this year we'll be celebrating the second version in Mexico. Or the same side event, which makes uh, greater, I mean, gender issues visible in a sector as strategic as green nitrogen. Despite the progress, we are far from achieving gender equality and there's an urgent need to close this gap. Not just because it's the morally right thing to do, but because it's the smart thing to do. Women are 50% of the, at least 50%, in my country we are like 51.2 or 51.4, uh, of the development potential of a country of the world. However, globally in renewable energy, only 32% of working people are women. And this data may be Le, um, old because it's from IRENA from 2019, but it's the last data that I could found. In my country, Chile, the figures are even lower, and I'm not proud about that. One in four people in the energy sector are women. And that might sound, well, okay, it's 25%, it's not that bad, but the fact is that this gap is more acute if we go to the operational area, where only 9% the, of, of the, there is only 9% female participation. And of course, in senior management position, one in five people are women, and we have a gender pay gap of 24%. Undoubtedly, this reality is worsened, and we must act to reverse it. And we're working on that, I have to say. To ensure the sustainable incorporation of women in emerging energy industries, it is relevant to consider at least two dimensions of problems and challenges that are currently present. I, it's much more complex than this, but because the time is not so high, I'm going to put it in two levels. One, structural barriers, and second, skill, skills gaps. In the case of structural barriers, it is still common for infrastructure and facilities not to consider the needs of women. There are no women's toilets, for example, in the, in the companies. And I was remember, I forgot the name of this movie, of the three women who start working in the, in the NASA, remember? Yes. And they have to walk like, like two kilometers to get a bathroom or something like that. It is not possible to access hygienic supplies in remote places or even wars. There is simply no safety equipment available in their sizes. Not only in the sizes, but also if I would say regarding women's anatomy, and that is something that I saw also in Sweden where women were really participate as when I was Minister of Defense, they were really active in defense. And when I asked them what is lacking, they said, 
look, they put us men clothes on it. So, mm. and of course, they don't fit us very well. So, I mean, it it sounds ridiculous and not very important, but it is important if you want people to be interested, enthusiastic about being part of a system. Um, it is essential to ensure the existence of this infrastructure in emerging industries such as green hydrogen. Gender biases are also present in recruitment and labor relations. We don't want women only in administrative tasks, but also in operational tasks, and of course, also in decision making. We'll, women also often see our careers interrupted by the almost absent work-life balance and co-responsibility. Let me give you an example. In Chile, we have a parental postnatal leave. Well, not very long, but something. Only 2% of the men make use of it. Uh, the overload of care work that has historically fallen on women causes them to participate la 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 less in the labor market, and this in turn contributes to their impoverishment. Putting care at the center and addressing the responsibility which falls disproportionately on the shoulders of women is also an urgency in the workplace of the energy sector. Continuing to make the situation invisible will stall progress towards gender equality in emerging in industries. Another structural barrier is the absence of binding instruments mandating gender equality policies in the private sector. Uh, for example, when we started trying to increase the number of boards, uh, women in boards, because as you mentioned, uh, I think it was Ingrid Hoffman who mentioned it, uh, how the presence of women at boards had increased the, or the, um, the uh, rentability, the equity, etc. And that as human, you and women, I was pushed for that a lot. And then the European Commission decided to, to start with, because Norwegian has started that, and show during the crisis that where you have the companies had women on board had a better, better outcome than the ones who didn't. So it, it was very important to do that. And in Chile, we started to do that, but we started with the uh, public sector to try send, to show by example that if the private sector was doing it, the private sector was following, but it was not sort of mandatory. Uh, instruction or so on. And in this other issue, the same. You know? So currently what we're doing in Chile is that the coordinated work with the companies and unions is through non-binding instrument, which is okay, but complicates accountability you know? in accordance with the minimum standards required to guarantee the advancement of gender equality. Let's go to the area of skills gaps. There's still low participation of women in STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Careers is worrying. In Chile, only one in five students of these careers are women. And areas such as electrical engineering, the participation is even lower. I don't know how in Germany the situation is the same. No. Increasing the presence of female students is essential to advance in women's labor force participation in more specialized areas. And in addition, we need this to happen from the beginning of their working life, avoiding late insertion into these markets. Because we see a lot of women have worked in other areas a long time, and then they become interested. So they come, they have to study again, learn again, so it's more complicated for them. To move towards gender equality, we need to implement good institutional practices in the development of emerging energy industry. Firstly, as you mentioned, organizations must collect accurate information on participation, wage gap, and situations of arbitrary discrimination faced by women, which allows them to know their internal reality with diagnosis and baselines. And at this point, I want to highlight that Chile will carry out a diagnostic study of gender gaps in green hydrogen during this year, 2024. That will permit us to give more realistic or more objective, uh, I would say, uh, uh, plans to uh, get better outcomes. In addition, strategic alliances and commitments must be generated at all levels. People in management positions and authorities must express their commitment to gender equality, understanding and make it visible as a necessary responsibility for sustainable development. In this regard, Chile has promoted different spaces for intersectorial collaboration within the framework of Green Hydrogen Action Plan, which in turn contains a gender mainstreaming strategy with a series of prioritized measures. In addition, legal initiative must be taken to provide accountability with the private sector. Legal rules are not going to solve everything, but they are a good step in the right direction. The way we do this can be discussed in many discussions in the world in terms of companies and human rights or whatever, 
uh, everybody's working on a smart mix of, uh, of measures, some that can be mandatory and legal, some that can be voluntary. I mean, there can be different ways, but we need to have a, a, something a little bit more structured so everybody can commit and, and can be and can show the results. Um, I, I would like to highlight um, the bill presented in Chile that promotes transparency and the adoption of measures for the labor inclusion of women in companies in male dominated sectors. On the other hand, public private initiatives stand out, which although not binding, are a first step that can set the stage for the installation of legis legislation aimed at the sector. An example of this is the Energy Plus Women Plan of the Chilean Ministry of Energy, which today provides technical assistance to more than 120 companies and unions in the energy sector to advance towards gender equality. Along with the needs of women workers in the energy sector to advance towards gender equality, I cannot fail to mention the gaps in accessing energy that for various reasons women have around the world. Ensuring access to affordable, secure, sustainable and modern en energy is one of the sustainable development goals of the UN's 2030 agenda. According to ECLAC data, of the, that is the Latin American Caribbean region, of the 16 plus billion people in Latin America who still do not have access to electricity, or the 77 plus million without access to clean cooking systems who use charcoal firewood, the most affected are women and children. By the use of this more precarious, but also by its consequences in health. We are friends few days after commemorating International Women's Day, we must remember that in the 21st century, there can be no place for discrimination and inequalities. Women deserve equal opportunities, equal freedoms, equal duties, and equal rights as men. And the energy industry is at a key moment to facilitate the incorporation of more women under equal conditions than men and thus, and thus advance gender equality. One could think, look, we're just starting. Don't ask us for so many things. But on the other hand, if we believe what we are saying, that that can be a real contribution for the for the company, that could be a real opportunity. An emerging industry where there is a lot of room to do new things in a different way is the ideal space to make this leap. This will not only benefit women, but will certainly benefit the in industry and society as a whole. In the work for gender equality, we also need men who are committed to equality. This will be the only way to create a fairer and more sustainable world for all. So I'm very happy that we have a lot of men present here today. Thank you very much. Thank you, President, for those inspiring words, not only outlining the main challenges, but also giving concrete examples of actions in order to achieve gender equality in the energy sector and hopefully also in the green hydrogen industry. Thank you so much. And fortunately, she will be staying with us in our next panel discussion, uh, in which we also um, have the honor to hear from other important guests, such as uh, the Ministry of Energy in, um, in of Industry, Energy and Mining of Uruguay, Elisa Facho. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, also, Maria Elena Lee, Director of International Relations of the Chilean Ministry. Alex Santander, also here with us. Director of Strategic Planning and Sustainable Development of the Chilean Ministry of Energy. Monica Gasca, the President of the Hydrogen Association of Colombia. And of course, Gloria Alvarenga, who will be doing a short presentation afterwards. Director of Integration Across Access and Energy Security from OLADE. And we are also very thankful for the presence of the member of the Bundestag, Katrin Ulig. And thus, I would like to start this section um, asking you, um, Mrs. Ulig, could you kindly give us your view of the leadership of women in a changing energy world? Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellencies. It's an honor to be here today. Um, a lot has already been said that's probably true for every hydrogen company I know of and for the whole energy sector as such. Um, so let me just give you some ideas or impulses that haven't been said. Um, when we look at diversity in whichever field, it, it diversity increases resilience of the infrastructure we create, of the teams we create. We've seen studies that show that 
when we have men and women, diverse ages and backgrounds, that the teams actually achieve higher aims and goals. Um, that they work better together and that we have a resilient infrastructure, which is in an ever changing world with crises on the horizon, a very important thing to have within um, such infrastructure, especially in the energy sector. When looking back here in Germany, the energy sector has been male dominated and probably everywhere in the world. And this just energy transition we have now is a chance to actually change something, to um, actually not just change the way we produce energy within our countries, but to create something different, a more diverse system that is more resilient for everybody. Um, Ms. Bachelet mentioned um, legal rules, which are important, but I also think that narratives are important, that the stories we tell, um, little girls, uh, young women, are even probably as important as le legal rules because they change the way we think about what is possible. We, they change the way we look at a field that is currently male-dominated and maybe make it more interesting to women um, to change their careers and to crush structural barriers and move forward with a career path their parents would not have envisioned for them. Um, Education is one of the cornerstones because without education, women cannot access certain positions within companies and reach certain level of management to um, make decisions that are maybe different, maybe the same as their male counterparts within the framework. Um, looking at what is happening in Germany, we actually see that uh, within the renewable energy field, within the hydrogen field, there's a higher percentile of women working there than in the fossil industry, but there's still room for improvement within the sector. So I'm really, really looking forward to listening to your perspectives within Latin America, what your challenges are, but at the same time, what you have achieved, what has worked for you to maybe incorporate it in my daily work here in Germany so that we can cooperate with each other, learn from each other and move this just energy transition forward for the whole globe and not just within one country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Frau Uli. And this takes me perfectly to my next question, and that would be to Minister Facho. Um, we'd, I would like to get into the realm of strategies. And in this perspective, um, what has been the impact of the leadership of women in the development uh, of, the roadmap, of the roadmap of the development of hydrogen and its derivatives in Uruguay? And you yourself being an example of this leadership. Hello, good evening. It's a pleasure being in, 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 in this event. I'm really very honored being here with you, all your excellencies, and particularly with Miss Bachelet. I really admire her from many, many years ago. In the, I think in the road of decarbonization, we have a great opportunity for women because it is a new specialization and the momentum is really positive. Today, it is crystal clear that women can perfectly develop any task we want. Uh, a paradox situation is happening in Uruguay these days. In, we, we have a lot of, of women in, in this field. We, we are three people in, in, the, in the delegation here in, coming from Uruguay. Two of us are women. So in the, the one of the, the women is, a, is Maria Jose Gonzalez, an engineer that is now in another event. 
She is the leader of the Green Hydrogen Program. And well, me, I'm the Minister of in Industry, Energy and Mining. And the third person, who is an engineer too, is a man that works for UTE. UTE is the electric company in Uruguay. And the president of the electric company in Uruguay, it's a woman. It's, it's incredible because it's, it's a, a, a situation that uh, goes out of all uh, provisions. You, you, it wasn't it, possible to think about it five years ago. In Ute, the, the president now is woman. It's a woman, and it's been more than a hundred years of men being president of the company. And I, I think there is a, 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 a very good opportunity now because, as Ms. Bachelet said, it's a, a new discipline. It's something new that we can do in another way that we did things before. I, I think it's an opportunity because as women, we are more sensitive to environmental problems and we can do the difference in the energy transition. The key is give more visibility to women in decision roles and especially break stereotypes in order that, that more girls choose this profession. I think stereotypes are, are have done a lot of damage in, in, the, in, in our society and are, they are still doing that. And I think we as, as, a, as, as mothers and fathers and as a grandmother in my case and grandfathers have a responsibility to, to show another opportunity to our, our granddaughters and our, our grandsons. Is, is, is at home when you you choose the, the the gifts for the birthday when you you may maybe you choose a chess for the boy and a kitchen for the girl it's, it's in these little details that we really can do a difference in Uruguay the 60 percent of the of people in university are women, general. But in the engineering faculty, only 22% are women. But it's something really strange that happens in Uruguay, is that in the chemistry faculty, 58% are women. I don't know why. But in Uruguay, women love to study chemistry. And that's another point to think that green hydrogen is, is, and derivatives is really an opportunity for women because we, we have the electric uh, part of, of, of the thing, but we also have the, the industrial, the chemical industrial in the, in the, in the process. So uh, we, we are really encouraging women to, to be part in in the in the production, and uh, I can tell you that this uh, this month the the Ute the, the electric company is throwing a tender for for the building of a solar park, and they they put in the conditions that. 50% of the of the workers has to be women. And when they put that, the, it, of course it was the president who decided to, to propose this situation. Everybody looked at her and said, you are crazy. <laughs> and she said, I looked at the work that has to be done. I'm sure a woman can do it. So we put it this way. And I, I think these are things that
can happen and we have to insist that uh, the the give the insisting the possibility to to girls and to women to develop their, themselves also in this field thank you Thank you, Minister. Yes, indeed, we need to. <laughs> and now, um, keeping ourselves within a more programmatic or strategic realm, I would like to give the, the word to Marilena Lee, uh, who will talk a little about the program Energy and Women from Chile. Thank you very much, Belen. And thank you for this opportunity to GIS, all the authority here, present, President, Minister. Well, uh, it's very important for us to represent here the, this program. We are working in this program since 2017 uh, with a first stage of analyzing different model data, diagnosis, and now we are working in an action plan. Uh, this is a catalytic initiative that's enabled the Chilean energy industry and its supply chain to advance in a collective collective uh, challenge of adding more women in this industry. This uh, action plan seeks to make the energy the energy industry more diverse, inclusive, and sustainable, sustainable, and with a view to resolving through a systematic uh, work the gender barrier and the gaps that allow incorporation of more female talent in this sector. Particularly since last year, and with a view to achieve the sustainable development goals that the president mentioned, we are working in the number five, gender and equality and empower, empowerment of women. Uh, the action plan, uh, we're focused in different uh, line of work. First of all, advance to where achieving parity management and leadership position in the energy industry in a sustainable way. This is very important. The second one was uh, is reduction of the wage uh, gap. The third carry out strategy uh, to increase the incorporation of women in, in various positions in the energy industry and implementation of a gender action plan. The gender action plan is very important because we need to see this mainstream program. And also, we are working with the United Nations Women uh, that are providing technical assistance uh, to the industry, uh, to working groups that provide knowledge, standard, and tool for the advancement of company in these four areas of work that are very important for us. Thank you so much. And I actually would like to stay. And I would love to stay with you, um, Marilena, if you allow me, because um, we also um, realize that the importance of women's networks in, in getting more gender equality in these sectors. So last year on the occasion of the fifth um, hydrogen summit, that was the first session of the network of women in hydrogen. So I would like to ask you, um, could you tell us about this and how you supported um, the creation of networks in Chile and its impact? Thank you. Of course, thank you, Belen. That was my first intervention was short because I have this second opportunity to mention this important network. And this is a network on green hydrogen. It is very important for us. Um, Emerge as one of the prioritizing initiatives as part of a gender mainstream uh, strategy of the Green Hydrogen Action Plan that Chile is pushing. Um, based in this action plan, uh, we create a working group with different uh, uh, ministry and agency on Chile, the Ministry of Economy, the Ministry of Women and Gender e Equity, and also the Chilean Economic Development Agency, CORFO. And uh, under this uh, uh, working group uh, emerged this idea of generating a network uh, with the objective of encourage dialogue between uh, women in the green hydrogen sector to report uh, on their priorities to move toward the development of an inclusive industry with gender equality. 
as well, as well as to generate commitments to ensure that at least a strategic point of this matter are implemented for a public um, and private collaboration. Uh, we expected to provide this network with uh, some technical assistant. Uh, we use uh, this program, uh, Mujeres Mas Energia, uh, Energy Plus uh, Women. Um, also, uh, we are developed some specific opportunity uh, on an application for green hydrogen, uh, both by women and for women. Uh, this uh, is an initiative that is led by Corfo, and also online leadership skills course that is very important for, for the member of this network. Um, I would like to share with you that the day that the NERCO was launched uh, as a side event of the fifth degree, uh, Green uh, Hydrogen Summit Chile like, uh, last year, we expected around 50 women and arrived at 70. And we open uh, online, uh, 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 create an online sign up. Uh, and today we have more than 600 uh, women in this uh, network. So it, it is very important and women uh, are a really great participation in this new industry. Thank you again. That is indeed very encouraging. And now, keeping uh, on the theme of networks, I would like to give the floor to Monica Gasca, who is the president of the, Hyd um, of the Hydrogen Association in Colombia. And I would like to ask you to, um, to share your experience in leadership as well. Thank you. Thank you, Belen. And thank you very much for the invitation to this panel. I mean, I'm so glad to be participating here with such an amazing group of women. As we all have said, the reality we face now is that women are not in the correct share of participation in the entities. This is not only on Latin America, it's also in Europe and the US. Um, energy is one of the industries that can change this and have the opportunity to have greatest possibilities for women. We not only are one of the industries that move the world, we have the opportunity to reduce emissions, but we also have the opportunity to make gender equality a reality in the world. The thing is, uh, we see all of these companies, they have gender uh, focus, they hire more women, but we must not lose the focus on what we really want to achieve. What we want to achieve is not just another woman on the board or another woman on the team. We want to get women to be um, to have the skills to go to university and focus on the careers that we need in this energy sector and that we need to develop these new green technologies around the world. So we need to promote policies that really last. We need to create opportunities that last in careers for all women. And for me today being here because I'm pregnant, this is such a, an amazing day because the first thing that I thought when I found that I was pregnant was, oh my God, my career. What what is going to happen with my career? And it was it was really scary. And then I thought, this is not a feeling that just me. This this is all of the women that find out that they're pregnant, thinking what is going to happen in Colombia. We have four months leave, and the first thing I thought was, what is going to happen with these four months? Who's going to replace me? Am I going to go back to my job? Fortunately, what I found is that there is a lot of support out there from women and from men also. Men are really in the position to take the decisions right now. So everything that we do to empower women have to include men. They are the ones that are going to also promote gender equality in our sector. Networks are really important. In Colombia, we have a lot of associations. We have associations for the mining, for the hydrocarbon industry. We have an association that is a really nice association is called Compower. It's an association focused on the young women. They focus on uh, talking to students about careers that are especially needed in the energy sector, promoting mentorships for those women, also um, linking opportunities. Because sometimes in Colombia, when we have a new job offer and we ask, okay, do you know some women to recommend? And it's like, no, I mean, where is the database for this? So these new associations of young women are also going to help us to promote and to have a gender equality policy that lasts over the years. 
it is really nice to focus on the boards and the high positions, but we also need to look to the future. The future is green. This, this means the future is our industries here, and those industries will need more young women to continue to develop the industries in the future. And one last thing I, I would really like to share is um, I am really happy about all of the efforts that Germany is doing to promote gender equality, not only here, but with its, its country, its partner countries. We are working really close with GIZ in two things that we want to do next this year. First of all, we want to homologate the Women in Hydrogen initiative in Colombia because luckily we have had a sector that is being developed by women and is being led by women. Since we started doing our energy roadmap, I was in charge of that at the Ministry of Energy in the last uh, government. And now the two associations of the industry, they are led by women too. So it's a really nice path that women are taking in the hydrogen industry. And the other thing we want to do is um, with the LAC Green Hydrogen Association, that is the Association of Hydrogen in LATAM, we want to develop the first study about gender in our sector. Because what we see, and, and mainly in Colombia, the first study of gender equality in the energy sector was made in 2018. The results were published in 2021. And the results are not good. The participation in the hydrocarbon sector of women is 24%. In energy is a little bit more, 32, but in mining is eight. So there is a lot of difference. And the first step is always to have the data. What is the baseline so we can promote the right policies? Thank you so much. I think that highlights a lot of very important issues for the future, including uh, comprehensive change in society and not only focusing on women getting into the sector, but it has to be for the whole of society, including men, of course. And I would like to come back to Minister Facho <laughs> now because Uruguay has another network that has, that has been founded. Um, so please, Minister, um, could you please introduce us to the case in Uruguay? Well, I, I believe women network are really, really, really important because there is nothing more powerful than a woman supporting another woman, another woman, a woman supporting another woman. And this is in, in the labor field, but also in, in, and in life. When you need something, you call a friend, you call your mother, you call your sister. We are really very, very supportive among us. And this has to be the same, and it is the same in the, in the labor field. I, I belong to an organization, a group of, of women that is called OMEU, Organización de Mujeres Empresarias del Uruguay. And, and it's been very important for my professional career the, the support I received from these women. In, in this organization, we realized many years ago that we, have, we don't have the same opportunities as women. But there are many times when the opportunity comes and we said no. We said no because we uh, have no self-confidence. We said no because of the family. We said no because of who the children or the husband, you know, any kind of things. And one thing we, we do in this organization is uh, coaching women to say yes. Because if we, we have this kind of situation that if, if we don't fulfill every point of the requirements, we said, no, I, I am not prepared to the job. And, and men, you are more intelligent than, than we are in this situation because you go, you do the thing. And, and many years ago, I, 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 found, I read an article of a, an, an engineer that explained the, the Flamingos method. The, the flamingos method is uh, uh, you you have to 
step on the things you know you are good and then do the next step. Be uh, trusting that you will learn everything in the, in the way. And then in that step, you can stand up sure, surely and the, do the next step. And it's really a, a very good thing to, to, to visualize. In Uruguay, it, last year, the, it was created the Asociación de Mujeres en Energía. It's, a, it's an association of they are, most of them are, are engineer, and the, the aim of the association is to foster women's professional careers in the energy field. And they are really very well organized, and they are uh, doing a, a lot of uh, wor workshops and meetings, and it's very interesting to see them because they have a lot of energy <laughs> to share. So I, I think we, we also have to connect different organizations, you know. In Uruguay, we have Mujeres Empresarias, Mujeres en Energía, Girls in Tech, uh, the, the, the different kind of associations of women, and, and I think we have to coordinate and to work all, all together. But it's definitely very, very, very important. And, and it's not true that the worst for a woman is another, a woman is another woman. That's not true. We are really very supportive. And when one woman reach, uh, reaches a, a, a good position, she always Bring, brings with her another women. So let's bring more and more women to, to, to the table. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. I'm sure we will be applying the Flamingo method in our future. Um, and so now looking at the future, um, I would like to hear from the Director of Strategic Planning and Sustainable Development of the Ministry of Energy of Chile, Alex Santander. Um, what are the next steps in this, in this program and implementation of the action plan for the development of hydrogen in Chile? And how women leaderships are factored in? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Belém. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, so relevant space. And hello, all of you, authorities and and every uh, public in, in general terms. It's a pleasure to be here. So uh, saying that, in my case, I'm going to talk about, briefly, about uh, how the design of public policies in the energy sector includes a gender equality consideration on, heart, on the heart of those instruments. So that is what we do with my team. So I'm going to tell you how we, we, we work on that. So, previously, in Chile, since 2015, we have a natural energy policy, uh, which established not only a government vision, but a state vision as well, uh, creating a long-term consensus vision that strengthens uh, our energy sector progress, considering a broad participatory process, of course, that must ensure the representation of different actors in the energy sector and gender topics is so relevant, of course, both in content and in representations as well. So from that, we updated that policy during 2022. And in 2021, we launched a, our Green Hydrogen National Strategy of Chile. And now we are finishing our Green Hydrogen Action Plan 2023 and 2030. So, in different instruments, from a strategic to, to tactical oriented policy strategy plan, complementary between them, we have included important aspects related with gender equality. And this is so important and is crucial because this kind of instruments allows to establish these topics as a base load uh, in, the, in the industry. 
uh, transcending different administration on, or, or governments as well. And that it's the role of those instruments and the importance that technical teams that build that kind of instrument must be so diverse with different knowledge and of course more diversity will always imply better results. So in the case, case of current uh, energy policy, we have two important strateg strategic goals related with uh, gender equality in the pillar new, uh, new Productive Identity for Chile. 100 of medium and large companies in the energy sector have gender equality policies developed by 2030. And gender equality in management positions and salaries in public and private organizations in the energy sector by 2040. In the case of our hydrogen strategy, we have a goal that, say, that says we will ensure early and continuous participation of communities near projects incorporating gender equality and human rights approaches. But the most important thing that I want to tell you now is how we have considered the gender equality in our Green Hydrogen Action Plan. First of all, this plan consider a strategic committee composed by 10 people and six of them are women, including our President Bachelet, of course, uh, which represents a 60% of women. That has been very important milestone considering that uh, our energy policy now uh, uh, has uh, had an advisory committee with only 34% of women in, in, in its composition. So in the case of the hydrogen action plan, the main objective is to define a roadmap between 2023 and 2030 that allows the deployment of a sustainable green hydrogen industry uh, and its de derivatives, of course, through coordinated actions between the different governments, institutions, and related agencies. And the specific uh, objectives are incorporate the sustainability dim dimensions uh, uh, to the action plan, including aspects related with gender equality and representations. Organize the actions of state agencies that have an impact on hydrogen industry. Prioritize current actions and identify new actions and to define roles and responsibilities for a better and clear accountability, considering a strategic and detailed monitoring, monitoring of every actions with a PMO control. So in the context of action plan since April 2023, an interministerial roundtable on gender and green hydrogen was created, led by gender office of our Ministry of Energy and coordinated with Ministry of Women and Gender Equality, Ministry of Economy and CORFO, our Chilean Economic Development Agency. Under its work, a gender mainstreaming a, a strategy was generated linked to our Chilean Green Hydrogen Action Plan, a, which publicly delivered prioritized measures. So the plan's gender criterion prioritized a, measures that constitute a unique opportunity in Chile to outline standards in advance of industry development are providing technical assistance to the green hydrogen industry for the sustainable incorporation of women into the labor force. This action is related with the Energy Plus Woman a, a plan that Maria Elena mentioned. Gender sensitive recommendation for evaluation, installation, and operation of projects for production and consumption uh, of green hydrogen and derivatives. Training of at least 30% of women in all training and certification processes uh, of the Ministry of Energy in green hydrogen and derivatives. 
consolidate the green hydrogen women's network and to train women leaders in the industry. Develop public-private agreements in regions of the country where hydrogen production projects and derivatives are to be installed and promoting the sustainable uh, development of the industry and its value chain, of course, which implies different aspects, but in gender focus. Hiding women will be favored as well as la uh, local labor from the productive region. And the sixth, yeah, e e execution of training programs for competitiveness uh, in green hydrogen and derivatives being so important aspect and certification of labor competencies and school internships uh, abroad. Plus an online course on green hydrogen, old opportunities and applications focused on women uh, is also offered with the mission of improving the capabilities of professional to prepare projects related uh, to the generation of green hydrogen based on technological, strategic, and economic criteria in the context of the development of renewable energy. So that is <laughs> for, for now. <laughs> and we are doing a lot of things related with gender in the three instruments. So thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, this has been great to hear concrete examples of measures into a program, uh, into a national program of development. Uh, and I would be circling back to our keynote speaker. Um, we, uh, Madam President, I would you call the experience of the committee uh, as, as a be best practice for women leadership uh, at a high decision making process of a national development uh, program? And if so, and what were the key factors? Well, may I say something before coming to this point? Because one of the things that we all agree is the importance of education since very young ages. Uh, young, um, I would say, um, uh, educational training. I'm, I'm a fan of, uh, you know, nurseries and, and, and kindergartens because I believe there is where you can really uh, foster all the potential of children. You can also show them the importance of and the ro role models in all levels of walks of life, but also you can work with parents so they can also try to change the culture of how they raise their children in terms of giving, as you were mentioning, um, uh, possibilities and so on. Uh, but I still, and we did a lot on that during my two governments, but why we have not yet found the answer is to change the situation of women interest in STEM careers. We have been for many years doing so much because we had great women scientists, astron astronomics, uh, I mean, space uh, experts, mathematicians, all kinds of, and we have developed all kinds of projects, programs with young children, women talking to, to girls, uh, try to learn from a lot of experiences. And even it has improved a little bit, it's too, too slow. And I can imagine that here it's also in many other parts. I don't know if you remember when I was a UN Women um, director, uh, the president at that time of Harvard University says that women didn't have brain for mathematics. And that was his last day as president of Harvard. Uh, was that Harvard? I think it was Harvard. Huh? Larry Summers. Uh, so I have mathematics has not been my passion in life, I have to say. I'm, I'm much better for other areas. So I, I decided to try to find out if we had some experience in the world where these things is clearly the all, all the way around. And I found out that in, in India, uh, engineering school have lots of lots of women. So, uh, but my question is maybe something that we should do together with Germany and all the ones who are here is try to identify what kind of research has been done on this. Because there's a lot of theory, theories. One is that the problem with teachers that they sort of find that men usually are more, you know, they like more mathematics and all that kind of thing. So, so they don't insist to teach that hard women and they focus more on men. That's one. The other thing that we, we discussed by being your women with the, a lot of presidents of universities, among others, the uh, Pennsylvania University, she was a man, a woman, the president. 
And she said that really it looks like the way they teach these things are not really interesting for women. So what I'm only saying that we don't really know. <laughs> we don't really know. There are some hints, but we don't really know. And I think if we really want to have results, we have to understand better what's going on. Because it's pretty much worldwide, all this. It's pretty much, and I, I don't want to believe that this is linked to DNA, really. I think there are factors. Because I think, I mean, they're great mathematicians. We will remember that movie, as a matter of fact. No? And there's so many good women in science and, and technology. So, so, but I think we need to understand better because otherwise we'll be repeating and ourselves. We need to increase STEM uh, and uh, interest of women, but we might not be doing it the right way. So I think that could be an interesting partnership to, to work because maybe many universities have had good results and research. I don't know. I, I haven't found the answer, and I've been looking for it for a long time. I have to say, but let's go to your to your question, Berlin. Well, first of all, in terms of women leadership, I think we have heard here a lot of great experiences. Huh? And and what how what is the difference? I mean, having said that, not all women have gender perspective. Mm -hmm. I have found a lot of women who have no gen are not gender sensitive. I remember in Davos. A very, uh, very important company leader said, well, I'm not uh, successful because I'm a woman. I'm successful because I'm, I'm, I'm good. So I told him, oh, yes, I'm present because I'm good. But the truth is that I open spaces for all those good women who are invisibilized and do, do not have the opportunities. So I meant to say that because being a woman is not a guarantee uh, that they will believe in gender equality and women's empowerment. But we have heard what the difference you, Minister, your friend, and you, Ute, mm -hmm. and, and of course, yourself, and many others. I've spoken probably, Madame Ulich, as well as parliamentarians, and so on, and all of you in your respective um, jobs. Um, in the case of Chile, I think that the strategy was really intelligent from the ministry and the minister. Because uh, Alex and, 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 and Maria Elena has mentioned how they did it when they started with this green hydrogen. Uh, a strategy and how to develop an action plan. We have had problems in the past with environmental groups or with communities trying to develop certain certain practices or certain projects. So we learn a lot that if you don't do it with the communities and if you don't participate with people who can see on one hand, understand the, the, the benefits for them as well, but also to say, hey, Look at these issues before you do this, because this could be very harmful. So that debate, that conversation, permitted the, the ministry to understand in each region, particularly in Magallanes, in Antofagasta, where there was big projects were going on, is which what, what was the risk perceived by the community, so we could find ways to solve it or to uh, understand how to go in that direction and try to find solutions that could be a win-win for everyone. But on the other hand, it will also permit the population, the people, the communities to understand better what, what was the what was what was wanted to be achieved. And not, you know, because usually people who are against everything, they could start saying, you know, oh, this is fake and so on. So it was a very interesting at different levels. And that has permitted then the advisory committee of ministers and the technical groups to think on the plan of actions and solutions and ways to solve this or, or to avoid these risks and problems and wait. But what the most intelligent thing was, all of that was pretty intelligent and found that the experience that the country has had, good and bad in energy projects in the past, it was that to decide to try to create this strategic committee where there will be a political agreement from different parts. I mean, there were people from the former pro, pro, uh, government that was in opposition to this government, but there were also people from the academia, from the from the industries. Uh, there was the, the former minister of energy of the of the of the former government. He was part of then and other ministers who had been part of also building to economy or or or, or uh, uh, what you call public works. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, you have people, researchers, ecologists, and so on. And as Alex was mentioning, six of them, we were women and me. And when the minister asked me why to, to be part, I said, I'm not an expert. Yes, but you have to decide a lot of things on energy projects during your two turns. And, and you were part of the, uh, also the 
environmental um, group when you were Minister of Health and Defence. So you can you can you you know the challenges. So you will permit us to understand better some challenges. So I accepted, and it was a great experience. I have to say, because and the best experience was because what we tried to do, uh, we also had representation of territorial organization, both governors of Magallanes and Antofagasta was there. So we would also understand better why sometimes, I mean, the, the private sector is always complaining, and we, and I understand that right, the long, I mean, the long period of time until they get the permissions for everything. But talking to these guys, we understood what was the problem, the lack of enough human capacity to, to be able to, to discuss on all the permissions, different permissions, etc. So it was really interesting because on one side, people wanted to diminish the standards. And we said, no, it's not about having less relevant standards. Because on the other hand, we want to, the, the European Union to be part of that. We want to help many countries. So we need to maintain high level standards on environment and others, labor, et cetera, et cetera. But we need to accelerate the process so the companies will be interested, will get the permits, and will be able to start working. So that was very important, this divergence, political divergence, if I may say, not divergence, diversity. And, and also gender, territorial, social uh, academia meant that we could get into this strategic orientation. We were not going into the technical aspect, of course, and the goal of achievement industry that could, could and the other thing was we don't want that kind of investment in our country. I'm not going to mention any country, but you might think who could be, who go to a country, build something, bring the workers, and don't leave anything to the country. We said we want to, we want private sector to come here, but we also want that that has mean that we have to develop human capacity, knowledge, research capacity, et cetera. So everybody wins with this. So we define five dimensions that reflect this vision, citizenship, environmental, international, economic, and human capital and technological innovation. And the most important thing that in some minutes we thought it could be difficult because we thought this thing were from the ones who wanted less permits and the other ones, whatever, we could do it. We could get into an agreement and a good into a common vision, and that is so important because energy uh, energy uh, experiences or kinds of development are not a one government. It's a long term. It's not a short term. So you need to get agreements that will permit that industry to really be able to develop in the best possible way as fast as possible. So that's what I think. And we were a lot of women who wanted to find certain possibilities. We all put our, our issues there, you know, this is a fact, this is a risk, this is how we solve it. But we also could get into a language where we all could live with it. But it was not that kind of language that you can see sometimes in international organizations that are so vague that then nobody knows exactly what it means. No, we try, no, because sometimes you say afterwards, how, sorry, but I work a lot in international organizations. They say, you have this mandate, and I read it, well, what does it really mean? Because that was the language that everybody could, you know, get to live with it. No, this meant, yes, we can live with it, but it's really substantive and it's clear enough for everyone. And I think women play an important role. We were 60%, of course, men as well, but six. And I think, but also because, as you mentioned, Minister, uh, women try usually to get into agreements. Some people say that because in the house, we mothers are always trying to get the children stop playing, uh, trying to hit themselves. No, I don't know the reason that we all believe that it's important to be inclusive, to participate, and to get into agreements that everybody wins. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, President. And I think we have learned really a lot from all of this experience in Chile, in Colombia, and in Uruguay. And I would like to to, to give the word now to um, the member of the Bundestag, um, Ulik. Um, it is a clear example, all of this has been a clear example of how women can lead the energy revolution. And I would like to, to hear from you and how we can help to scale this, and if you see a future.
I would thank everybody who shared their experiences with us today, because I took a lot for my personal work here in Germany from all your um, experiences. I take away that networks are really, really important, that inclusion in decision-making processes is something that we really have to look at. And from the experience from Chile, I actually take that when you include gender diversity in something that usually is not looked at, like a plan to create a hydrogen in industry and you include it from the start, that there is there are stepping stones and there are ideas that actually make it a normal thing to think gender within a framework that is more technical. So it's more of a global um, idea that is included in every idea that you put into a plan, that you put into your strategy, and that um, becomes something normal to think of. So thank you for sharing that. That was a, a really interesting aspect. I actually will use the Flamingo method from now on in, uh, um, in a lot of discussions because um, one experience that I've had was that I call up a woman expert and she gives me the response that, um, oh, this is not my optimal field of expertise. And then um, one time uh, she said, no, I'm, I'm not going to do it. So she hung up and five minutes later, she called me back and was like, man had said, would have said yes. So I'm saying yes now. <laughs> so I think we need to use this kind of thinking to actually allow ourselves to try new things as women and to um, actually trust that there is a network of women that want us to prosper and take steps forward. I um, learned from Colombia that um, it's not only about getting one woman on the board, but to also think of all the other women that will see that woman follow up through the ranks on different levels, maybe get inspired by each other and form a network and work towards changing something within the industry. So thank you for sharing that. Um, I have a lot of notes. So um, let me just um, say that I hope this was the start of a discussion and not the end of it, and that we will have different opportunities to share our experiences and learn from each other and um, have a bright future that includes more women in the energy sector in general and make a just energy transition that includes women and has women in all parts of the industry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frau Ulrich. And um, on that note, I think we all know that we are a little behind schedule. Uh, but still um, thinking about learning from other experiences and scaling um, from what we've learned until now, I would like to give the floor for a brief presentation of Gloria Alvarenga from Olade, and who will always um, also speak about the creation of the Gender and Energy Commission within Olade. Please, Gloria. You have the Thank floor. you. I don't know if it's on the presentation. Well, good evening, everybody. This uh, guest here is going kind to of virtually too, uh, to this important event. I uh, especially want to thank uh, the, GIS, the German Development Corporation Agency for the invitation. And for me, it's a very, very honor to be able to, to be sitting alongside leading women and men uh, here because of uh, Alex, and uh, it's an honor to be uh, be with them. They are a uh, uh, reference in the energy sector of the Latin America and the Caribbean region. So I'll be kind of running on time. So I know. Uh, so there is um, a little bit about Olare. Uh, we are uh, the Latin American Energy Organization. We were created in 1973 
through the signing of the Lima Agreement, and we are an international intergovernmental organization. Um, we work for cooperation and coordination and a technical advice um, for the energy sector. We have 27 country members and the Latin American and the Caribbean region. We have two bodies of governance, and we, um, the first one and the highest authority is the Median of uh, Energy Ministries. And the second one, it's the Council of Ex Experts, that the advisory, um, the, minute, the meeting of ministers. Um, our fundamental objective is promoting the um, integration, conservation of uh, rational use and commercialization of the defense of the energy, energy resources. So thank you very much for um, creating these type of uh, spaces that we can contribute together. I can share you some of the the picture of the Latin American and the Caribbean, and we can integrate in the needs that the region uh, have seen the different uh, agendas. Um, here's um, a brief um, role that we have um, in the region of public uh, commitment and in energy integration integration, sustainable development, and the cooperation and technical assistance um, to deliver to the, our member countries. We also have some tools that um, bring value to the region. Um, we have the CELAC, that is a product form who holds uh, the energy information and the statistics and documents um, from the, the whole region. Uh, we've been the repository of the statistic of the Latin American and the Caribbean region um for 50 years already uh, we have same that is another tool uh who have the the, the different uh, allowed to build different scenarios and develop energy uh, we have also the cap black that is our own training tool uh, i'm going to talk about uh, detail a little bit later and we have also um have indexed the scientific journal and finally we have different methodologies manuals and uh, guides, reports that we provide uh, from the energy sector. Um, Latin America and the Caribbean is a very uh, heterogeneous uh, region, which is uh, very rich in, in, in energy resources. We are the greenest region in the world. Uh, as a comparison to the world currently has about 14% of renewable participation, it is primarily supply. The Latin American and the Caribbean region has a 33%. Um, so we got, we uh, consider made consider, uh, a considerable progress uh, incorporated um, the renewables energies during what is now considered the first uh, phase of energy transition. However, our countries are uh, now aiming to um, go forward at the second phase of this energy transition. It includes decarbonization hard to abate uh, the sector such as transport and the industrial sector. Um, we also are focused on making energy transition just just and including focus um, on uh, gender equality. We have our regional challenges. Uh, the, um, I'm going to mention briefly a, a little one. Um, the new emerging technologies, making mobility sustainable as well as Making sure, uh, making the best of the uh, the best use of hydrogen projects. Um, also, uh, our regional electricity integration initiative is still pending. Uh, make um, sure that the energy transition are just with territories, communities, environmental, and vulnerable groups uh, of people. And we need to increase our release, re resilience uh, to the impact of climate change through adaptation. Um, we have uh, the potential in Latin America and in the Caribbean region as thermos of renewable. I don't know. <laughs> right there. Great. Thank you. Mm. Uh, well, as I said, uh, um, in the potential that is given the interest opportunity for reduce, producing clean and or low. Uh, emission uh, hydrogen. Um, several countries in this region are focused on developing such projects. For example, we have uh, two of the main countries, uh, Chile and Uruguay. 
as well. Um, as a 2023, um, uh, there we have uh, 17 oper operative uh, projects and 129 that uh, they're under development. The countries, uh, we have made the greatest progress in terms of hydro hydrogen. Uh, they are uh, Chile, Colombia, Brazil, and Uruguay as well. So we, here's a, a picture of it. So, um, Oles being aware of this importance of promoting the projects related to the production of clean and low emissions hydro hydrogen and establishment of a regional market has been different initiatives to develop uh, within the region. Um, our first initiative uh, that should be mentioned is a CERTILAC, the, which is a declaration that was promoted by OLADE uh, and the support with the IDB. On November uh, last year, on an Energy Week in 2023, several countries of the, of the Latin America of the region uh, signed a declaration standing the importance of carrying out the effort to establish a clean and or low emission hydrogen certification for the Latin American region, and we call it CERTILAC. With this declaration, we expect, expect to have uh, soon our first regional certification scheme for hydrogen pro uh, projects. Uh, furthermore, we are exploring the possibilities to implement um, hydrogen projects we the exit from Chile, uh, funded by the, uh, the uh, European Union, uh, which is has energy with the regional projects implemented by the GIS as well. In gender, as uh, they mentioned before, um, men almost quadruple the female participation in making the energy sector most of the preponderantly male space. Um, decision making and management um, concentration re remains uh, predominantly on a male tax task. Globally, um, as a, in the region, uh, women are paid 20% less than their male counterparts. And also, on the other hand, we uh, identified that the, in the oil and the and gas sector, women barely per, uh, represent a quarter of the total numbers of the workers uh, in the initial career state. So this is uh, very heavy to, to to keep going, you know. But well, following that, uh, we decided in a mini meeting of ministers of all the region through this. Um, the gender and ministerial decision in order to support gender equality and efforts in the region. LADE has focused on a guarantee the incorporation of the gender perspective in all activities and all the operations related to energy sector in Latin America and Caribbean and promote gender equality to empowerment of women and girls of the region. That's why we are working on this agenda, installing a gender commission leading by Chile uh, and other countries, uh, six, uh, six countries are, are, are going to be with them. Um, and likewise, um, we established a gender uh, technical group. Uh, we discussed uh, this gender and, any, any, and energy issues uh, that will serve um, for the Energy Commission to work. This year, we will uh, seek also the initiative of, of respective ana analysis uh, in order to, to establish um, a regional methodology for data collection, analyze uh, analysis and all the gender equality issues and areas re uh, related to the energy sector will be part of, this, uh, of the sections that we were in, going to work in the gender commission this year. And finally, we, we will also deliver an executive uh, development program to deal with gender and energy issues as an empowerment of a woman. Here's our um, our own training platform called CAPE Black. Um, this platform is free to access to all private, public sector, 
uh, academies, social, um, uh, civil society, at, um, and others. And this year, we are launching our, our 2024 executive uh, training program. One of these is uh, for ex specifically, uh, we have five um, ex uh, training programs that we will be developed. Um, as you can say, uh, see uh, energy policy, regional energy integration, just energy transitions, technologies, and hydrocarbons. And um, two of the main programs uh, that we will we'll develop is one of our gender, and the other one is from hydrogen. Right here are the the most important programs right now. Uh, are the uh, as I as I said, uh, we are specifically uh, want to highlight the first that I mentioned earlier, uh, carried out by training curse uh, foster gen gender equality in the energy sector in the Latin America and the Caribbean region. The virtual component it will be open to all women in Latin America and the in region, and the other one is going to be uh, performing for the students that we will have in a spot. Uh, and can also be in person participating in our ninth Energy Week uh, in Paraguay this year. Um, second, we wanted to, um, on the topic of low uh, emission uh, hydrogen, um, we will have a training program has multiple aspects as it as deals with uh, low uh, emission hydrogen and to use um, Low emissions, uh, hydrogen current development in, in Latin America and the Caribbean. I'm sure these programs will be provide a good basis to a capacity building in our member countries and also with a company of the private sector and uh, civil society and academy. Um, we hope to, to be able to execute the needs. Uh, that the country have in their agendas. So, um, saying that, we need all the support uh, we are trying to do and to be part of and support to all the member countries of the region. And also, we want to invite everybody to join this effort that we are making because we just have, you know, um, we don't have all the possibilities to to be magic and and to to help everybody as as we want, but we have the picture and we we have the needs of all 27 countries, uh, and they are really are trying to keep going to these agendas and to you know link and to synchronize these agendas. So we are trying to move forward, but we need help. So. It has to be said. So thank you very much for all your help. And I will be looking for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gloria Alvarenga, for your presentation and for your invitation. <laughs> I think it's very important to underscore the importance of to underscore the importance um, of learning from each other, of coordinating and escalating our efforts in order to achieve gender equality in the sector. And without further ado, <laughs> I will give uh, the floor to Dr. Ursine Kumpholz from the BMDK for the closing words. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, it's an honor and for me as head of the division responsible here in this ministry for the bilateral relations uh, with Latin America uh, to close this very impressive event. First and foremost, I would like to thank Her uh, Excellency Mrs. Uh, Bachelet and you, Minister Elisa Fascio of Uruguay, member of the Bundestag, Katrin Ulig, Mrs. Ingrid Hoven, Mrs. Sabine Amir Janjan from the European Commission and Parliamentary State Secretary Stefan Wenzel, as well as all the other participants. I won't mention you all, but I very much appreciate all your uh, contributions, because I think uh, you really made this uh, event a very interesting one. Uh, was, uh, I had the impression that my learning curve was rising. So thank you very much for all your valuable contributions to this event. I think you gave us a very important overlook of how much can be achieved by involving women in the energy transition but how much there still needs to be done to and all the challenges that we need to overcome. Um, thank you too for your unwavering support for gender equality in green hydrogen, 
and your commitment, uh, which is instrumental in driving forward this important agenda. I would also like to thank, thank uh, GIZ uh, very much for organizing this very, very valuable uh, event uh, on behalf of the Team Europe project, Renewable Hydrogen Development Chile, uh, of the European Commission and this ministry. To me, this event has demonstrated yet again Green hydrogen presents a unique opportunity not only to unlock renewable energy technologies, but also to empower women as key stakeholders. With climate change accelerating, it is even more urgent to tap the, the diverse talents so that we can drive innovation and accelerate the transition towards a sustainable future as fast as possible. I'm very impressed and encouraged by the female networks in the green hydrogen sector across Latin America that have already been informed. And I hope that the networks will be expanded soon and cooperation among networks will be improved. Let me invite you now to continue our discussions in an informal way. And once again, thank you very much for all of you who have participated in making this event such an interesting and successful one. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Kompfels. And now I I think here the cluster coordinator, Jorge Crisodorescu, would like to have a word. Just to, to thank all of you. And to say that we would like to take a picture together just here in front of the entrance, if you don't mind. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. So thank you again to all of our honored guests. And we could no, now move to the last part, which is in the Lichthof. And thank you all, really honorable. Uh, we will have the meet and greet at the Lichthof, two floors down, so on the ground floor.